start getting into this because this sounds really interesting. And because the thing is that they've they've tr other games have tried to do similar things with with added bonuses and added value or or whatever they like to call it and. The reason that it, it comes across as gimmicky is because it is. It's it's just a way to get a return on investment rather than really giving an added value to people. It becomes valuable to people once they start caring about it, you know. Yeah, you know. And, they, and uh, when they care about the dev, when they care about the company that 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 dev works for, and when they care about the game that games that they're making, because they see that the people making them care, that's when you get a good positive feedback loop going. Yeah, I just wanted to bring something up real quick that Graz just said. He said there are people saying that even if the game never makes it, being a part of the order was alone worth the price of admission. That's kind of a that's kind of a big that's kind of a big statement, especially because uh, if Graz is seeing that, I don't know. Graz, are you um, are you uh, in the order or are you just still potential at the moment? I'm not sure. I don't remember. But him saying that is kind of a big deal because. Um, Graz is active in the community. Um, he's had some. Uh, he's potential you know, at the moment. But he's yeah, potential. That's, that's okay. He's, he's had some moments where uh, he's been on the fence um, and some concerns, I guess you could say. But the fact that he's noticing that is kind of a big deal. Uh, because, I agree. Because that's that's important. That's what we're what we're aiming for. We're, we want people to see that. Um, uh, it, it, with, what we're trying to do is real, and what we're trying to do is something right, and trying to do something positive. And and, and you know, just just I want to harken back to that uh, one thing I was talking about a, a while ago, and it was it was really um, getting into some of the questions and problems you're talking about, where it seems kind of fake um, from some of the other groups. And here, one of the reasons that that happens, and I'm going to use, we were on a podcast about, I guess, a week ago, and we're, uh, one of the first questions when we started talking about community-created content, um, uh, the person in the podcast, name's Mark, really great guy, um, said, man, I got to tell you, when you start talking about this, I, I, get, I get kind of worried because of what happened with the WB, and when they started asking random polls on the audience and they started telling the writers what to do and he goes that could turn into a train wreck quite frankly and what's really different about what we're doing and why that's the crowdfunding part there is no publisher the writers are canonized you can talk to us anytime that's why I was so razor sharp on not community driven because we have a goal we know where we want to go and we've carved out these large regions that we're going to say we want the community to fill this part out and then we're going to take the community on a ride through this path and it's it's this whole opportunity of saying we're not trying to appease people through I guess a vote of popularity we've got a direction that we want to go, go and we know where we want the community to go but it's that part is up to them and what they want to do. Um, within the first couple days, Aaron, uh, some of the stuff on the Elder Gods blew me away. And, and we oh, were yeah. talking, I was just like, Whoa, where did this come from? And, and when we actually spoke to the person, he said, man, I've been dying to do this for so long. Yeah, and I, I'm busy at work, I could just never do it. And you gave me the opportunity, and it was, it's was got some of the most popular stuff right now in the order. One guy told me that he's had the story that he submitted written for like six years. Yeah, that blew me away. That's I like, crazy wow. dedication. That's crazy. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. It's one of my favorite levels. Uh, got any uh, background info for this level? Um, well, it's another love story. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a uh, the type of love story that Ken and I like to uh, uh, write, which I would describe as bittersweet at best. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, you know, he's doing this for the love of his life, um, and he pays the price for it. And um, he 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 ends up being, um, one, in my opinion, one of the most hit heroic characters because he has to wait hundreds of years before he's actually finished. You know, with his mission. Yeah. He's going to town there. <laughs> He yep, is. just swinging away. <laughs> oh. I gotta tell you guys, I hadn't played this game in about, I don't know, seven years or so. And I think maybe 
three years ago, uh, my girlfriend at the time went out and found this this uh, old game shop. Basically, so they sold games that were from like you know GameCube all the way back to Atari generation and stuff like that. And um, honestly, this is probably one of the best gifts I've been given in, in forever because. Oh, thank you. I. Uh, when I played this game as a kid, it just, it had such an impact on me, because it was just, it was so different. And you, even after playing it, it's still so different going back to it. It's like nothing I've played since. I think even I failed a midterm because of this game. <laughs> <laughs> In college. But, well, I'll tell you, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to create Shadow of the Eternals because you don't see stuff like this anymore. Um, there's uh, one, of the, one of the big influences for Ken and I, I guess, in, uh, when it comes to the history of our, our, our writing and our writing careers, our content creation years, or whatever you want to call it, because we're certainly not purely writers because we're making video games, but was Babylon 5. Babylon 5 was one of the first uh, television series to actually have story arcs that were made over a year, and it changed the way television was made. Um, and the when you look at Eternal Darkness at some level, um, it it really it really stood apart from um, uh, all the others because we tried so many different things. And one of the reasons, uh, frankly, that you don't see this uh, in very many games is because it didn't sell that well. Which you is know. Insane. It is what it is, you know. Who knows? Who knows why it didn't? But it just didn't. Uh, there's people at Nintendo that I, I I've kept in touch with, mm -hmm. and we worked really closely together on this project. And to them, these are guys that worked on Pokemon, tons of games. They're like, this is still one of the favorite, if not the favorite game they've ever worked on. And um, you know, it, it's, but it's, it's just not common. And and so, we have a chance to do something. So we really, really hope that people see the opportunity that we do and will will help us out in and pledge to the project and i hope everything goes through with it because you have no idea how excited i am for this like ah uh, awesome it's it's great oh thanks thank <laughs> well we've had, um, we've had a lot of interest in the game that's for sure Jeff. Question about the camera in Eternal Darkness: Is the NTSC and PAL version different? Grows thinks PAL version may be a little different with the camera work. Hi, um, the camera work isn't any different, but he is right. Back then, PAL and NTSC were slightly different, so one runs at 50 hertz and one runs at 60. So he is right. That's not too many people notice that. That's very good. Um, the interesting thing about Shadow of the Eternals is different. So Eternal Darkness was one of the first games where you couldn't control the camera. There's no camera control here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we, we're going to show it off when we do our, our, our next one. Show it off is probably a bad word, but demonstrate um, what we do in Shadow of the Eternals. It's a hybrid where you can always control the camera, but it also does stuff on its own as well. Okay, nice. So if you need the extra little angle in that, you could get it. You don't That's get right. screwed by camera placement like in some of the old Resident Evils in this. Sometimes it's fine. Not as much as right, well, this. Yeah, you can move the camera at any time, but at the same time, sometimes it will do stuff on its own, but you can always, you're can always you always in control. So we, we it's a hybrid, and it's something uh, that I think gamers are really going to like. And it, yeah, no, you, I will. Okay, good, good. Yeah, if you... Uh, if you uh, look at the demo, it, it's reminiscent a lot of Eternal Darkness, but we're actually doing a lot of different things. Which is good, because you all yes. want to make the same game. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. We don't yeah. want an Eternal Darkness clone, we want a newer version of awesomeness. A newer version of awesomeness, I like that. Yeah, that's uh, what's one of the things Ken and I are really... Um, we've had a couple questions, they're like, this is not going to be uh, regurgitation, or and we're just like, it's so different from so many different aspects. I think people are going to be shocked at some of the things we do. Actually, I hope so. Anyway, um, they shocked me when I first started talking about them, and I'd look at Canon. It's one of those times where I and these are I, these are all spoilers, so I can never unfortunately talk about them. But Understand. you hit this point where you go, yes, we're doing that. That's going to be cool, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Well, I haven't been shocked in a game in a while, so I hope it will shock me. Huh. We'll try. 
That's what I like to hear. Me too. So, um, there, you, you've, it's been mentioned many times before that there will be sanity events in uh, Shadow of the Eternals, much mm -hmm. like uh, Eternal Darkness. Do you think mm -hmm. we'll ever be able to, before the Kickstarter ends, do you think there'll ever be a video showcasing any of these sanity events? Um, besides the one that we've already seen uh, from, from a standpoint of, like, don't forget, the whole world blows apart, and we're questioning whether that really happened or not at the end of the video. True. So that's that, 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 I, that was going to be my other question. Or could it be that we've already seen some of these sanity events? Like, well, what, I think... Like, oh, sorry, th that one that you had there, was that more of a scripted thing? Or would that happen... I, I know I'm probably getting into territory that you can't actually talk about now. But would that that seem more like a scripted thing and not as much of an sure. insanity event, kind of like the ones with um, Alex's grandfather in, in here when it's you have low sanity at the end of a chapter or between chapters or something like that. Right. It seemed like one of those events, not one that's like you're losing too much sanity, things start going crazy, you know? Yeah, and I think that's a good question. And, and, and so... Um, Thinking about the breadth of, of of games and the different categories, you've got content, you've got technology, you've got audio, you've got visual, and you've got gameplay. You can just you can create a plethora of things that make the player question whether something's real or not. And then you've got the fourth wall, where it's actually happening to the gamer, not the character. Those sort of six favorite. areas that you can just like just expand everywhere. And then, okay, so then just sit back and imagine now we say, we've got a lot of ideas that we want to do, and now we're going to put them all up to the community too. So that's part of the order. Where do you think we should put some of these things? What, what things do you guys think? What kind of tricks, what kind of things could we do um, that would say players go, is this real? Is this happening or is it not happening? I'm not sure. Well, there's been a lot of people that's already contributed a whole bunch of ideas. I put out a few of those, actually. Actually, that, that, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, some, some people have, like, uh, like Phil and I were talking about some of the stuff that people put out, and we were kind of blown away by a couple of them just the other day that we were talking about. Well, there's some pretty good ones out there already. Yeah, I've seen some really good ones, too. Yeah, it should be, I would say just stay tuned. That's what I would say. Ah, I got a blue screen of death because of my sanity dropping. One of those fourth <laughs> wall ones you were talking about. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Rolled. <laughs> appropriate. Appropriate. I know, right? It's like uh, the game knew you were wanted it to do something cool, right there. Exactly. Yeah. I think I wigged out the first time I saw that one. I was very. I, I think the only one that truly got me was the deleting my game saves. That was the most yeah. evil and yet ingenious oh. thing. I specifically oh, yeah, I freaked seen. out at that <laughs> one. I was like, no! <laughs> I specifically remember that one because, uh, I, as I said, I was in college when I was playing this game, and uh, it was the weekend, and I had been drinking. Mm -hmm. And you know how what happens when you've been drinking and playing oh. video games, and bad things happen? Yeah. I've deleted oh. all of my saves on 360 before on accident. Yeah, I've done I was some. Really upset. I was really upset. <laughs> like, I was very, very mad. And then I realized it didn't really happen. And then well, <laughs> when you think, think about, so just let me put some context on that one, too. Think about the industry back then where no one had automatic saves and so saving, so that was really important to people. Yeah. But Nintendo really cares about quality control and that their system as seeing as working right. And remember we were saying earlier their games are almost bug free. Mm -hmm. Some people could really get angry, throw their machine against the wall oh. or controller and say, hey, that's not my fault call customer support, Nintendo was extremely brave to move forward with this, uh, because I, t I remember talking eternally a long time, this was frightening, that one was frightening, <laughs> we had no idea how people were going to react, and thankfully the reaction was great, people got it, but I am sure somewhere there was a consumer call saying, I broke my GameCube because I threw it against the wall, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, and that was a really, in my mind, that really showed uh, Nintendo stepping up to the plate and saying, we're going to try something really different. 
here, and we're gonna, let we're me, gonna let me just go through. Give a quick little addition to that.